Let's interview the one supplier that I believe is going to turn the prosumer 3D printing industry on its head during 2024 with the launch of their new 3D printer. Mark, I really appreciate your time today, and I would like to hear a little more about the special printer that you're launching here at Earth. Oh, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for having me, Ken. Of um, course. And uh, so this is our new printer, Magneto X. Mm -hmm. It's a linear-based uh, motion system. Okay. Um, the motor, you can see, if you can, this, uh, you can see the magnets on the on the rail here. Yes. Um, and and there's no. Um, belts and no uh, pulleys, no wheels, mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe we kind of went through a little bit yesterday, you yes. saw how it moves. Yes. Uh, so uh, there's a lot less friction, so there's a lot less noise, mm -hmm. and it's uh, l less maintenance for users long term. Okay. And if you need to work on the extruders, um, there's no belts to kind of block in a way, it's a lot easier to maintain. If right, easier. right. So that, that was kind of the initial <laughs> idea to build a printer that requires as little minutes as possible. Okay. Um, and the type of user I had in my mind was uh, like a print farm or a small business. Okay. Who prints yeah. a lot. Yes. Who, who time is available for them and they can really spend the time selling something else instead of you know, repairing the printer, so okay. you know, tensioning the belts and whatnot. And how about the accuracy? In other words, with this, are you able to get better quality prints versus the standard 3D printer? Um, based on the print results we bring so, um, and so the repeated uh, accuracy is about three micron. Okay. Um, and we don't see um, the V the VFAs, um, mm -hmm. and there's there's very little ringings on that as well. Okay. Um, I think um, obviously we there's still before production mm -hmm. we still got a lot of uh, optimization to do. Yes. But the results are very very promising, mm -hmm. um, and we felt that. On that end, you also can save a lot of um, a time for users at the post processing. Okay. Because for some application like prop making, they mm -hmm. need the service to look good. Right. Exactly. So if we got that artifacts on the side, you know, they will spend more time sending and cleaning up, mm -hmm. and that takes a lot more time. And and what is the software that people will be using on this? So the printer runs on standard Clipper. Clipper. Uh, mm -hmm. And are we? Recommend using Oka Slicer okay. because it has, a, it has the best um, Clipper integration at the moment. Uh -huh. So you will kind of talk directly to you know men cells on Clipper. Okay. Um, and yeah, we find the experience really well. Yeah. Okay. And tell us about the hot end that you have on here. Uh, we the hot end we designed the hot end in house. Um, it's we call this the lens extruder, mm -hmm. um, and it has a swappable uh, melt zone, so it's very easy to swap. Okay. Um, the idea for that is that um, you, user can easily swap different length of the uh, melt zone. So depending on their printing goal, if they want a maximum flow rate, they right. go with the longest one. Okay. Uh, if they want a good balance, they yeah. go with the, with the shorter one. Okay. Which will uh, will be easier to manage the streaming. Um, and also, it's about three minute swap. Mm -hmm. So. If there's a clock or jam, yeah, it's very quick for them to swap it out, put okay. a new one in, and uh -huh. it. So a lot of the idea is actually um, um, to save user time. So this is as little maintenance time okay. as possible for them. And tell me about the print volume. It's 300 by 400 by 300. It is. Yeah? It is. You're correct. Uh, it's 400 on this side and mm -hmm. 300 on that side. Okay. And the reason for that is because the way. Um, well, first of all, it's a. Uh, we, we talked to a lot of users and they told us that's kind of the size they want. Okay. Uh, it's big enough to print something like a helmet. Yeah. Um, but still small enough to be manageable and usable. Okay. Because when you go bigger, it takes a lot more energy to hit up the bat. Right. right. And the way the rails set up is that um, the, on this side, it can handle more weight. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's best to make it a little longer. Okay. You might as well make it longer. That's, sure. that's kind of the way. And also the arrangement is such that uh, it's, uh, it's wider. Yes. Uh, it's easier to put on a table instead of uh, longer. Okay. Right. Okay. And we, we have the filament mounts on this side. Okay. So it's easier access. You don't have to kind of go around the back. back. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So they, all, a lot of these are coming from the users and, and we appreciate their feedback and try to implement as many as we can. And then you also have an option to enclose this as well, both yes. sides and, and top. Uh, both enclosure on the side and on the top. Uh, they are in the standard 
in the standard Manito package, it doesn't yeah. have the enclosure. Right. Uh, but if you do need them, you can pick them up as, a, as an accessory. Okay. And it's pretty easy to install. Yeah. And tell us about the timing uh, and also the price. Right now you have uh, pre-orders. So we have a pre-order going on for $13.99. Okay. And retail will be $19.99. Okay. Uh, this is Future Ken to cover some more details before we get back to Mark's interview. The pre-sale cost is $1,399 for the basic unit, plus $210 for the full enclosure, $50 more for the optional full width parts cooling fan, and $175 for shipping in the U.S. for a total pre-sale cost of $1,834. After the presale, the cost will be $2,444. I am so convinced that this printer will be a game changer. I'm putting my money where my mouth is, and I've ordered a fully loaded presale unit with my own money. I'm a mechanical engineer, so I plan to perform a full engineering evaluation of this printer. When I upload my video, you won't want to miss it, so I suggest you consider subscribing to my channel, so you'll be notified when it's available. Now. Let's cover some questions that I haven't covered so far in my interview with Mark. Number one, why isn't the printer printing anything? Mark explained that the extruder was damaged during shipping from China and they didn't have any replacement parts because this was an engineering prototype. Number two, is the printer noisy? I was right next to the printer and I found it to be very quiet. However, we were in a noisy trade show, so it was a bit hard to know exactly what the noise will sound like in a more normal environment. Number three, does the printer create a lot of vibration? Most of the movement in the video was due to a very wobbly table that it was sitting on during the trade show. Does it have a camera? Yes, it has a 1030 pixel camera that's mounted in the one corner. Is there a parts cooling fan? Yes, besides the standard cooling fan that's on the extruder, there's an optional full-width bed cooling fan available for $50. Will the magnets affect other electronics? Yes, Mark warned us not to get too close to the linear motors with our cameras. Does it have an air filtration system? They haven't decided on that feature quite yet. Now, let's cover some of the specs. Things I haven't covered yet are, the printer speed is 800 millimeters per second. The nozzle design is using E3D nozzles and they come in 0.4 and 0.6 copper and hardened steel. The hot end maximum temperature is 300 degrees C and the extruder volumetric flow rate is 60 cubic millimeters per second. The build plate maximum temperature is 130 degrees C and they have a 48 point grid auto Z height and bed leveling feature. Okay, now let's get back to Mark's interview. Yes, and uh, we expect to go into production at the end of uh, October. End of October. And then okay. we start shipping to local warehouses mm -hmm. uh, around mid, starting mid November. Okay. Uh, the reason we do that is because it's a heavy printer. You mm -hmm. want to do ground shipping so that we can maximize the saving for Okay. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that sounds great. Right. Well, I really appreciate your time today, and we'll make sure that we have Mark's link for his company on our. Uh, link in our description below. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you Mark. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.